the Alabama versus LSU pregame show, sponsored by Zaxby's and Calhoun Community College. LSU remains undefeated. Alabama gets a second chance and makes the most of it. They win the BCS championship behind Coach Nick Saban. To the 20, to the 10. Touchdown, Alabama! How about that? How embarrassing is that? And he's hurt. He has taken a hammering tonight. Pulls up, lobs it into the end zone. It is tipped and incomplete. And Alabama in overtime. Back to the I formation on first down 10. Here comes Fournette. My gracious, the yards are tough tonight. Friday evening, 5 o'clock, the Crimson Tide arriving in Baton Rouge. Nick Saban and his players getting off the buses at the team hotel. And earlier today, you know what they say about playing in Death Valley at night. The fans extra rowdy because they had all day to tailgate. Look at that pig. Looks good. And how about the one and only Alabama fan surrounded by a bunch of Tigers. And just about an hour and a half ago, the top-ranked Crimson Tide arrives at Tiger Stadium, ready for its top 15 matchup with conference rival LSU. Welcome to the place they call Death Valley. I'm Chase Horn. That's Taylor ba Taylor Baum. Taylor, the Tigers had a mid-season coaching change, has turned their year around, but is it enough tonight to pull off the upset against Alabama? For Alabama, a loss tonight would tarnish their perfect record as of right now, and it would throw a wrench in their quest for another national championship. Whether it's the Tide or the Tigers in the win column tonight, we're going to have a big battle <laughs> here in the Bayou. That's right, but let's rewind the tape a little bit to see how we got here for the Crimson Tide. A big milestone for Alabama earlier in the year. Finally, getting the monkey off its back, beating Ole Miss for the first time in two years. And then a big test for the Tide. It was Texas A&M on the schedule. It was a test they passed with flying colors, knocking off the Aggies 33 to 14 to remain undefeated. And then no surprises earlier in the week, Tuesday, the first college football playoff rankings released with Alabama placed at the top of that list. Now the trick, of course, staying there. We'll see what happens. As for those Bayou Bengals, they started off the season on the wrong foot with a 16-14 loss to Wisconsin. Then a few weeks later, they fell to Auburn. Head coach Les Miles was fired after 16 and a half years at the helm. And with that, the Ed Ogeron era began. Now under the interim head coach, the Tigers have won their last three games and find themselves back in the rankings at number 13. So who exactly is this Ed Ogeron guy? He is the definition of Louisiana, a true Cajun at heart. Coach O grew up just outside of Baton Rouge. In fact, he actually signed to play football here at LSU, but transferred out a few weeks later after being on campus. Ogeron has plenty of coaching experience. His first head coaching job was at Ole Miss from 05 to 07. Then in 2013, he served as the interim head coach at USC after his good friend and current Alabama OC, Lane Kiffin, was fired. He was then hired here at LSU in 2015 as the defensive line coach. So go back to last season, the last time these teams met. A top four matchup in Tuscaloosa, LSU, the higher ranked team at number two, Alabama ranked fourth. But you know the story, the tide rolled big time. 30 to 16, eventual Heisman Trophy winner Derrick Henry ran for 210 yards, three touchdowns, showing up LSU Heisman hopeful Leonard Fournette. The Alabama defense squashed his Heisman hopes, holding Fournette to just 31 yards on 19 carries. And the tide hopes to repeat that performance tonight. You know, all 11 guys just got to come out and, you know, play football. You know, everybody has to do their job. You know, we have to do a, do a great job of tackling a great bat. So, I mean, you know, defense got a huge task at hand. Whatever happened last year is the pass. And uh, we're going to have a great game plan for Leonard. But I'll, I will say this to you, that it's going to be very tough moving the football on this, on this defense. They're one of the best defense I've ever seen. 
The Alabama defense, of course, anchored by defensive end Jonathan Allen. 35 tackles, six sacks so far this season. Of course, the most memorable sack, this one against Texas A&M. Check it out, right over the would-be blocker Superman dive to take down Trevor Knight. Wow, just wow. Teammates still talking about that play. A guy who's, who's his size, oh, uh, almost 300 pounds, doing that type of uh, stuff on the field is amazing. Um, great athlete, and like, like I said, I'm just glad to have that guy on my team. It was cool. I thought it was cool, but um, I try not to focus on that. I try to focus on what I have to do to get better. So what I took from the game was the missed tackles, the missed opportunities I left out there. So that's kind of what was eating at me. Come on now, Jonathan <laughs> Allen, always a quiet guy, trying to play the humble card, but you know watching that play and the film the next day, he was loving it. I, I'm I, loving it. I think we need to give Jonathan Allen a cape. He deserves a cape after Superman. that. Play. He's Superman. Cam Newton but you know, style. that front defense is <laughs> extremely stout with guys like Jonathan Allen and Tim Williams, but the secondary is a little bit thin, and to make matters worse, their All-American safety, Eddie Jackson, is out for the rest of the season with a fractured leg. We saw him walking into the stadium earlier today, actually crutching his way in with a boot on his foot. Jackson tallied one interception this season, which he, of course, returned for a touchdown, but more Importantly, he was the backbone of this secondary, the quarterback on that side of the ball. So now the coaching staff has had to shuffle the deck. Cornerback Mika Fitzpatrick worked a lot at safety over the bye week, but Saban says he still hasn't made a final decision on Jackson's replacement. Well, Minka has worked back there some, and he's very natural at it. Um, played it in high school quite a bit. Um, so we haven't made any decisions for sure on how we'll go there. We'll just continue to work and see how it develops. You always got to do what's best for the team, and that's what Coach says is best for the team right now. And uh, it's just another challenge that, uh, that, that I have to accept. And I see it as an opportunity to kind of show my, my versatility. Fitzpatrick knows there's no I in team. Jackson, also the team's leading punt returner with two returns for touchdowns. Saban says Xavier Marks and Trayvon Diggs will take over that role. Calvin Ridley may also field punts at some point. Now let's take a look at overall defense. Here's how Alabama and LSU stack up in total yards, practically dead even. Alabama fourth in the nation, giving up 2,196 total yards. LSU fifth, having given up just one more yard than the Tide. Same goes for total points. The Tide fifth in the nation, just 119 points scored on Alabama so far, but LSU, the Tigers, the third ranked team, just 105. But those similarities diverge when it comes to sacks. Saban's crew leads the country, bringing down the quarterback 32 times. LSU a ways back with 20. Alabama also sets itself apart when it comes to non-offensive touchdowns. Alabama defense and special teams has scored a ludicrous 12 times this season. What? You have to go back even further. 10 straight games with a non-offensive score. That streak dating back to the semifinal game against Michigan State. Tim Williams, Jonathan Allen, Eddie Jackson, Minka Fitzpatrick, Ronnie Harrison, Deron Allen, all part of the six club. That's that stat makes me sick. I feel like if we played for Alabama, we'd be in the six club. Everyone's getting in on it. We'll see if anyone is going to join the six club out there tonight. Hey, they're always looking for turnovers and, you know, the streak's going to live. I got that feeling. Could be a difference maker tonight. But hey, how about scoring points on offense? We haven't looked much at that side of the ball. We're going to talk about both sides of the offense. That's coming up in the next portion. Stay with us. Hearts still heavy here in the Bayou after the passing of their live Tiger mascot, Mike the Six, last month. He was first diagnosed with a rare form of cancer in May. LSU on the hunt for Mike the Seventh. It hopes to have a young male donated by a rescue facility. Of course, Mike the Tiger, one of the many things that makes that ambiance of Tiger Stadium, LSU, and Death Valley. Even without Mike the Tiger out there on the field, this is still an extremely, extremely tough place to play. There's no doubt about it. Every Alabama player has admitted it this week. It's not a hyperbole. It really is tough to win here, especially under the lights at night. Since 2005, LSU is 55 and 5 playing at home in night games. Tiger Stadium, wow. the sixth largest stadium in the nation, seating 102,000 plus. Needless to say, it's pretty loud. We can hear them already out here right now. The fans bleed purple and gold, and Alabama knows firsthand it's a challenge. It's an intimidating place to play. I've been on the other side. But here's what I tell our guys. Big plays fuel emotion. They there. You got to give them something to cheer about. 
then obviously I know it's going to be very loud. It's going to be hard for those guys to make adjustments and calls. You really can't hear yourself think, to be honest. And I, th I just think, you know, that's one of the best stadiums you can go to and play to get a, a really college, a really college experience. Of course, the pressure will be on Alabama's true freshman quarterback, Jalen Hurts. He'll be dodging LSU defensive end Arden <laughs> Key, who is second in the SEC in sacks tonight. Hurts had a pretty slow start in his first true road game at Ole Miss, but he was able to keep his composure and get the win for the Tide. Now, it's going to be tough for him to play tonight, but it, Nick Saban says it's going to be tough for the entire team to keep it together and stay composed to get a W. There's no magical potion for what you do relative to playing in a game like this. It comes down to your ability to execute, block, tackle, focus on the things that you need to do to execute one play at a time in the game. And that's going to be important for the quarterback to do as well and take what the defense gives. And um, they're very, very good at what they do. And we need to be very good at what we do. Of course, the best way to help any quarterback, a strong running game, and that's where sophomore Damian Harris comes in. At the beginning of the season, everyone thought Bo Scarborough would be the guy, but Harris won the job and is shouldering the load as the team's leading rusher. Nick Saban says he's seen a lot of growth from Harris since he first arrived in Tuscaloosa. We could see that Damian was a very talented guy, but I just think was not confident in what he was being asked to do. Uh, as this year has progressed, he's gotten more and more confident. I think he has a better understanding. He's been very productive and played with a lot of confidence and has turned out to be the kind of player that uh, we thought he could be. Damian Harris is having quite the year. You want proof? Got to go to the numbers. Just 86 carries, but he already has 700 yards. Even crazier stat, that's an average of 8.1 yards per carry. He's a little light in the touchdown category, just one score for the season. Of course, he hopes to add to that tonight in Death Valley. On LSU's side of the ball, of course, Taylor, we've mentioned it before, everything starts and ends with Leonard Fournette. He's the heart and soul of that offense, but LSU has a transfer quarterback that's kind of helped balancing things out. Yeah, Danny Etling is the Tigers' man under center. He came into the game in the middle of the Jacksonville State game, and he stuck as the starter ever since. Since then, he's thrown for a little over 1,100 yards and seven touchdowns. But more importantly, this offense has become much more balanced under his leadership. Yeah, Les Miles, offense going nowhere. He's out. Coach Ogeron comes in. That offense is setting records in the past three games. Just killing it. Over 40 points in each of those games. Uh, it's And while they've struggled at the beginning, really hitting their stride. Like we mentioned before, the Tigers 3-0 under interim head coach. In each of those three games, they put up some major points. 42 against Mizzou, 45 against Southern Miss, and 38 against Ole Miss. Judging by the numbers, it's safe to say the Tigers offense is now firing on all cylinders. They're definitely still running the ball a whole lot, but I think their, uh, their passing game is definitely based off of their run game. So once their run game is, is doing well, then they're going to start chucking the ball down the field and try and make plays with their big receivers outside. And I think that's kind of what we have to be prepared for. And, uh, and uh, you know, we gotta, it's going to be a physical game. All right, now here's the deal. Alabama seniors have always dominated LSU since they've been playing five straight times the Crimson Tide has beat LSU, and that means the seniors on LSU have no idea what it's like to beat the Crimson Tide. They're kind of like every one of us. They've never beat Alabama. Overall, Alabama leads the series with LSU 50 to 25, five ties in that time period. The last time the Tigers beat the boys in Crimson, you got to go back to that 2011 game of the century, part one, the regular season, 9-6 snoozer LSU win. Coach Ogeron hopes that streak ends today. They do want to have success against them. I think that the two years ago that they felt that they played good enough to win the game, and some unfortunate things happened. Uh, last year, they handed it to us. I expect those guys to come out hungry, uh, wanting to win the football game, obviously. But they know that uh, the type of football game we have to play in order to uh, have success against this team. For as long as there's been the game of football, there has been smack top. Emo emotions, they run high, especially for a rivalry game of this magnitude. LSU's Dwayne Thomas, well, he just couldn't bottle up those emotions any longer. Earlier this week, the Tigers' senior defensive back, he had some words to say. He told reporters, quote, 
I really see us dominating the Alabama offense. I really see us dominating this team. This is the year we've been letting them off the hook for the last couple of years. This is my senior year. We're going out with a bang. Alabama players say that kind of talk goes in one ear and right out the other. You know, I don't really pay attention to it because, you know, everybody has something to say before we play each other. And, uh, you know, but well, it's, it's, it's whatever, and you just got to focus on your game and not let it get to you. We're going to settle our, our, our talk on the field, so we'll see them Saturday. So we're not really worried about what they're talking about right now. There's still a long week ahead of us to get, get ready and get better, so we're just going to focus on what we have to do and not worry about anybody else. So the Crimson Tide has seen success recruiting right out of LSU's backyard. Three top prospects held from nearby Monroe. Former four-star recruit Hootie Jones plays defensive back. Wide receiver Cam Sims been banged up throughout most of his career with the Tide, but he does have six catches this season. And left tackle Cam Robinson has seen success since his freshman year, starting every game since arriving in Tuscaloosa. All three juniors with the Crimson Tide. To add extra insult to injury, Taylor, linebacker Tim Williams hails from right here in Baton Rouge, uh -oh. the top prospect in the state of Louisiana coming out of high school. He secured six and a half sacks this season, 18 and a half overall in his three years playing for Coach Saban, a likely first round draft pick in the NFL. And this history goes way back. You remember Landon Collins when he spurned LSU. His mom couldn't talk to him for a while. <laughs> Nick Saban, really good recruiting in this area. Yeah, but it's not exactly the same for LSU recruiting no. <laughs> in Alabama. They only have two Alabama players on their roster, both of which are backups. So it's safe to say a Saban's reach goes pretty far outside of the state lines. Hey, our reach goes out pretty far. There wasn't only one game going on today. Other games around the SEC, including Auburn taking on Vanderbilt, trying to extend that streak. We'll have highlights of this game and take a look at the rest of the college football landscape. That's next. Oh my God. On Tuesday, the College Football Playoff Committee released its first rankings of the season and as expected, undefeated Alabama tops that list. Clemson is number two, followed by Michigan at three, both also undefeated. The big surprise is at number four, one loss, Texas A&M is ranked yeah. above undefeated Washington. Hashtag SEC, but we all know uh, it didn't really work out so well today. Ohio State also on the outside looking in at number six. So if the playoffs started today, which they do not, do not panic, the Crimson Tide would play the Aggies in Atlanta. If earlier this season you guessed that Auburn would be ranked in the top ten of the first playoff rankings, I need you to go out and play the lottery, and I need you to buy me a ticket too. Buy one for Chase yes, as well because do it. I don't think many people expected that. The Tigers are ranked number nine. Yeah, after Auburn lost to Alabama and uh, Texas A&M for its second loss of the season, Gus Malzahn hands over play calling duties to Rhett Lashley. Since then, the Tigers just killing it. Five straight wins, trying to make it six in a row against Vanderbilt today. Alabama A&M. Fakes to John Franklin, heads to the corner, makes a great play, gets in for the touchdown. Auburn takes the lead, but in the second quarter, Vanderbilt has an answer. Kyle Shermer, quick set, finds Jared Pinckney in for the touchdown. Commodores take a 13 to 10 lead into the half. So in the third quarter, Malzahn turns to Sean White, injured, but the guy can still chuck it. First drive goes right down the field, 21 yard pitch and catch to Darius Slayton for the touchdown. Tigers go up and that's where they stay. Auburn plays sloppy, but still wins the game. Final score, 23 to 16. I'm extremely proud of our team. Uh, I'm very proud of our, our coaches. We faced probably as much adversity as we faced in a win in a long time. Um, you know, we had some injuries. Uh, some guys weren't be able, weren't able to play. Uh, we had one of our top defensive guys get kicked out of the game early. <clears throat> we had some guys that really stepped up, uh, did a super job. Okay, other scores around the SEC. Look at this upset. Just talked about Texas A&M, the number four Aggies. Go down to Mississippi State, 35 to 28. Arkansas, another upset here. Upsets number 11, Florida. That final score, 31 to 10. Tennessee snaps a three-game losing skid, beating Tennessee Tech 
That final score, 55 to nothing. And all of a sudden with that Florida loss, a game that's really important, Georgia and Kentucky. Kentucky, a shot at the SEC championship game. Georgia leads Kentucky right now. That game in the first quarter, 7-zip. Those Wildcats making it interesting. Number seven, North Alabama hosting West Florida for its final regular season home game of the 2016 season. 27 seniors being honored. Lions will more than likely be back at Prawley for a home playoff game, but the seniors finish their regular season careers at home with a bang. UNA improves to 6-0 in conference play, beating the Argonauts big time, 51-3. With the win, North Alabama also claims the GSC championship for the fourth straight year. That's huge. Alabama A&M back at it after winning the Magic City Classic, hosting Grambling State. They fall big to the Tigers, 56 to 17. JSU is still perfect on the season after defeating Southeast Missouri, 17 to 10, a quote one, close one. That's their 22nd straight conference win. That's a lot of wins. But hey, let's go back out here to Baton Rouge because this is the game highlighting them all. Number 13 versus number one Alabama. We'll put on our expert hats, our keys to the game. That's next. Welcome back to Baton Rouge. All right, Taylor, number one Alabama, number 13 LSU. Let's be experts. Your key to the game. My key to the game is non-offensive touchdowns. Alabama rules the world essentially in that category 12 non-offensive touchdowns. I think the team who gets into the end zone via the defense special teams will win this game. For me, it's kind of a given. I got to go stopping Leonard Fournette. They did it last year, just those 31 yards on 19 carries. But hey, the guy already has 670 yards in just four games this year. So Alabama has to stop him if they want to come up on top again. But hey, Taylor, it's about time for kickoff. Woo. We can hear him. We got to get in to cover this game. See you right back here after it. Enjoy it, guys. trying to play your best football as a team. It's another opportunity for our team. Uh, if you're a great competitor, uh, you love games like this. 